Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to discuss the difference between the shutdown decision in the short run and the entry exit decision in the long run for our perfectly competitive firms. So I'm going to start with the short run first. In the short run, the number of firms in the industry is fixed, which means that there's no exit or entrance by any individual firms. And so a firm that's in the industry can either produce some positive quantity or they can shut down, which means that they produce no units and they basically just walk away from trading. Now in the short run too, the fixed costs that the firm incurs are what we call sunk costs. And a sunk cost is one where the firm has already paid the cost, so the money has been spent and there's no opportunity or chance for getting that money back. Now, the presence of these fixed costs, which are sunk, actually means that the shutdown rule for the firm is to shut down if the price, so that's P, is less than our average variable costs, which are AVC. To see why this is the case, we can have a look at our profit function. So profit is total revenue, that's TR, minus total cost, which is TC. Now, just adding a little bit more detail, we find our total revenue by multiplying the price that we're selling our good at by the quantity that we're selling, so P times Q. And we can actually break down our costs into two components. We have a fixed cost component, that's FC, and a variable cost component, that's VC. We can add even more detail here, which will help us. Our variable costs are actually equal to average variable costs times our quantity Q. Now we get this identity from our definition of average variable costs. So average variable costs is equal to variable costs divided by the quantity. If we multiply both sides by Q here, we get variable costs is equal to average variable costs times quantity. So I can put that into our profit function in place of our variable costs. And we've actually got a really useful expression for profit, which is going to help us explain our shutdown rule. Now to start, let's just see what happens when the firms shut down. So if they produce zero units, so Q is equal to zero. Well, you can see from our notes here about profit that there's going to be, well, no variable cost component, right? Since variable costs are average variable cost times Q and Q is equal to zero, so variable cost is equal to zero. There's also not going to be any total revenue since total revenue is P times Q and Q is equal to zero, so total revenue is equal to zero. But we still do have in our profit function these fixed costs, which as we said before, are sunk. We've paid them and we can't get that money back. So looking at our profit as a whole then, our total revenue is zero, total cost is just equal to fixed costs, so our total profit will be negative fixed costs. So that's the position that the firm will be in if they shut down. All right, now let's check what would happen if the price is equal to average variable costs. Well, if that were the case, then, well, price times quantity would be equal to average variable cost times quantity, right? I've just multiplied both sides by Q. But price times quantity, as we said, is equal to total revenue, and average variable cost times quantity is equal to variable costs. So if price is equal to average variable costs, when, then our total revenue would be equal to variable costs. Now, if we look to our profit function, then our total revenue component in this case would be the same amount as, so it would exactly cover our variable costs. But we're still left with our fixed cost component, which are sunk and which haven't been covered by our total revenue. So our profit in this case, if price was equal to average variable cost, would be negative fixed cost, the same outcome as if we were to shut down. So hopefully you're getting the hang of it now. Let's consider the case if the price is less than average variable cost. Well, I'm going to multiply both sides by Q. So price times quantity would be less than average variable cost times quantity. And that means that total revenue would be less than our variable cost. So if price is less than average variable cost, well, our total revenue doesn't even cover our variable cost component. And of course, we still have this fixed cost component that we've paid as well and are sunk. And it follows from this that our profit will be something less than negative fixed costs if the price is less than average variable cost. Lastly, we can consider the case if price is greater than our average variable costs. Well, if this was the case, then price times quantity would be greater than average variable cost times quantity. 
so total revenue would be greater than our variable costs. In this case, our total revenue more than covers our variable costs. It might cover all of our fixed costs, we don't know. All we know is that our total revenue is high enough to cover our variable costs plus some more. And this actually means that our profit will be something greater than negative fixed costs. Now, if we compare these four outcomes, we can see that the only situation that's worse than shutting down is when our price is less than average variable costs. And in this case, trading for the firm really isn't worth it because when they trade, they can't even cover their variable costs, let alone their fixed costs, and they end up making a bigger loss than if they just shut down. And so in this case, the firm should shut down and that's our shutdown rule. We shut down if price is less than average variable costs. Now I will say before I move on to the long run that the firm is actually indifferent between trading and shutting down if price is equal to average variable costs because the outcome in both cases is exactly the same. But we're certainly not mandated to shut down if price is equal to average variable costs, so it's not part of our rule. I will also say that this discussion shows that in the short run, the firm can earn negative profits, but it'd still be the right thing for the firm to keep on trading. And this is especially the case if price is greater than average variable costs, the price might not be high enough to cover all of our fixed costs or give us positive profit, but at least we're covering some of those fixed costs that have been paid for and are sunk and we can't get those funds back. So we can compare this discussion to our long run situation where our fixed costs are not sunk and firms are able to enter or exit the industry as they wish. As a general rule, we will have firms entering the industry in the long run if they can make some profits. On the other hand, firms will exit the industry if there is negative profits. So if they're making a loss, they're going to exit the industry and just go somewhere else, go and do something else. So working with our profit function again then, just like in the short run, we can understand total revenue as price times quantity. But this time I'm going to rewrite my total cost function as just average total cost times quantity. Now this identity comes from the definition of average total cost, which is equal to total cost divided by quantity. Multiplying both sides by Q, we get total cost is equal to average total cost times quantity. Now with our profit function, we have two terms, both with a common factor of Q, so I can factor that out, introduce a bracket and put price minus average total cost inside our bracket. This is a really useful way to represent profit because it shows profit as a function of the distance between price and average total cost. Now let's first consider what happens if price is equal to average total cost. Well then actually our profit will be zero this is because our term in the brackets will end up as zero since price minus average total cost will be zero because price is equal to average total cost. And it follows from this that if price is equal to average total cost, in the long run, there's not going to be any incentive for the firms to enter or exit. And just as a side note, this is actually an equilibrium outcome for our firms in the long run, specifically because of this reason. Now, if price is greater than average total cost, then our profit will be positive. You can see this because the term inside the bracket here will be positive since price is greater than average total cost and taking away a smaller number from a bigger one will give us a positive number. And so in this case, if price is greater than average total cost, the firms will enter the industry to try and take advantage of that profit. Lastly, if price is less than average total cost, then our profit will be negative. And this is because our term inside our brackets will be negative, taking away something larger from something smaller gives us a negative. And if we get this result, this negative profits, then our firms will leave the industry, they will exit. So that's really our shutdown rule in the short run and our enter exit rules for the long run for our firms in perfect competition. So just repeating, in the short run, if the price is less than average variable costs, our firm will shut down. If our price is less than average total costs in the long run, then we'll get firms leaving the industry. If the price is greater than average total cost in the long run, we'll get firms entering the industry. All right, so that's it. There is a lot more that I could do with this topic, but I'm going to end it here because the video is getting pretty big. Um, but I'll try and put up some more stuff on, on this topic soon. So keep an eye out on my channel or uh, I'll, I'll put, put it in the description. Thanks everyone. I hope you guys are doing well and keeping happy and safe.